Panda, 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 panda. I got broads in Atlanta, Gigi <laughs> Dolly in the family, <laughs> credit cards in the scammers, <laughs> hitting the licks in the van, <laughs> legacies. Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Junior. I'm gonna be showing you after you pinpoint the city and state where you're picking up and where you're delivering. I'm gonna show you guys, you know, what to look for to determine if you can make that delivery or not. You know, because the last thing you want to do is get with dispatch, take a load if you're not able to take the load, meaning you don't have enough hours. So we're gonna be looking at the hours real quick, briefly now, because the hours of service is something, a whole different subject, you know, like in the detail. And I'm just gonna to touch on it briefly, what you wanna look at and stuff, all right? All right, so this is where we're picking up. It says we're picking up 11.6 between 1900 and 2300 and we got to deliver it 11 8 at 0500 so that gives us mm, a whole two days to pick up and deliver all right all right so we're going to pretend that today's the six it's 1800 and within an hour we have to travel 12 miles to the pickup right now if when there's a window you either want to call it in and ask if it's ready or you can show up and hope that it's ready so what we're going to do is we're going to drive in 10 minutes tills 12 miles go in there arrive at 1900 and hope that it's ready if the load is ready then you have to drive 746 miles before the 8th at 5 a.m. So meaning that you had your 10 hour break, you got a fresh clock. And when I say fresh clock, I mean a full 11 and 14, all right? You got a fresh clock, you're gonna start your clock 12 minutes. You don't wanna off-duty drive. You know, the last thing you wanna be doing is off-duty driving, get in trouble. So you're gonna start your clock, get there send your arrival call and then check in if it's ready you have to run your full shift you know me personally I only run nine and a half of the 11 hours I never run a full 11 unless it's one of those loads where I have to take it in next day you know what I mean I have no choice but with that being said so I'm just gonna run my nine and a half hours and I would average 525 miles 520 miles at doing 58 59 all right so I'm gonna go in there check in pick it up and whatnot hoping it's ready if it's ready go ahead and run with it so we're gonna use Rodney's clock to determine if you have enough hours and if you have a full clock to deliver or not so Ronnie's been in the sleeper bird for eight and a half hours and he was off duty for a couple hours so you know being we'll pretend that we are 12 miles away again like I told you guys and it's 1800 now we about an hour away so you want to start to determine if you can take the load or not so you want to come to summary in this case He has to do a full 10. So, I know I said he was off duty for a couple hours, but he hadn't. He had not been off duty for a couple hours. He only, he's only been eight and a half hours in the sleeper bird. So he has another hour and a half to go to complete his 10 hour break. All right, so after he completes his break, he's gonna have a full 11. And then 
and he's gonna have a full 14. All right, so after he has a full 14, you wanna look at your total hours for the 70. All right, so we know that he has roughly 20 hours, 19 hours and 16 minutes to be exact. So 746 miles, which is what we got to go, So the first shift, after he does his reset, he's going to drive it in. The load should be ready then because by the time he gets there, it'll be like 20 hundred, which would be 830. All right. Or 730. I'm sorry. Because right now it's 1800. We'll pretend it's 1800. And he's got to be there 1930 because he still has an hour and a half to go on his break. So with after that he knows that he has enough hours to get it there you know he's got a full shift which is nine and a half hours which is roughly 525 miles so that leaves him with 221 miles to go to the 90 so no we know that that could be done in roughly uh four hours if we average it at 60 miles an hour that's four hours. 60 times four is 240, or 60 times four, yes, yeah, 240. So he should be able to run 240 miles in four hours, but to be on the safe side, we'll say five hours. So the nine and a half hours he used, he's gonna be using the first day, plus the five hours he is gonna be using the second day, that gives us 14 and a half hours. Now, if we look at the clock here, we have 19 and 16. So we know we have enough time to get it there. All right. So what Ronnie's going to have to do he's gonna have to run his shift overnight do his 10 hour break and then the following day he's gonna start his clock do five hours and go ahead and drive it into the delivery all right so at this point you want to look at this and then determine do you take the load or not because like I say, guys, you don't want to commit to a load and then you're not able to take it because dispatch is going to be mad. Now, if you tell dispatch you're not able to take it and they say go ahead and proceed with it, that's a different story. All right, guys, I just showed you, you know, the clock, what you want to look at uh, prior to committing to a load after you look up where it's picking up and where it's going. Next thing you want to look at is the hours. And like I said, you don't want to commit to a load if you don't have enough hours or you're not able to make it on the time that you have available. If dispatch says go ahead and take it anyways, that is on the company itself, dispatch. You're not responsible for it because you're letting them know ahead of time you cannot take it. You're not going to make it. So it's going to have to get repowered. You know, somebody else is going to pick it up in transit. But that you got to make sure as well that you document everything you tell dispatch. Because if you call dispatch over the phone, he, them, them words are gone with the wind man so you got to make sure you document everything and then call them up to confirm what you wrote on the Qualcomm all right so again guys you want to look at the clock make sure you're good I, again I said I'm gonna touch on it briefly because it's something you want to look at try to come into the load the hours of service is a whole different subject that I'm gonna get into later you know right now we're just doing trip planning you know what to look at before you commit to the load and how to you know uh, efficiency efficiently deliver the load all right hope you like it guys please like share comment if you have any questions please let me know and I'll get back to you as soon as I can all right thank you